Okay. For this afternoon, we'll be talking about Indigenous Peoples' Right Act of 1997 or the IPRA law. Okay. So basically, part of your examination is um, or revolves on the IPRA law or the RA 8371, which created the National Commission on Indigenous People. Okay. So the Indigenous Peoples' Right Act of 1997. So what is indigenous people as defined by IPRA, as defined by IPRA? The word indigenous people has continually lived as an organized body on communally bonded and defined territory. Okay, again, you have to understand the very significant terminologies here. Continually, meaning um, the stay of these people in, the, in their respective territory is undisturbed, and meaning. Um, they are consistently living in that particular territory. Okay. So, okay. Continually lived as an organized body. When you say organized body class, we are talking about a recognized group. Like, for example... Um, and a recognized indigenous group or indigenous community. No, kaya organized siya because um, par, there is an organization in the respective community. And as most of you siguro know, there are several um, parang chieftain. Yeah, they call it chieftain. No? They're calling these people the heads of this organized body as the chieftain on communally bonded and defined territory. So pag sabi natin defined territory, they are only, um, the, their territory is set and they only have, um, when you say defined territory, there is a restriction as to where their territory, is, where, where their territory starts and until where, etc. Now, they shared also common bonds of language, customs, traditions, and other distinctive cultural traits. So since they are a tribe, since they are indigenous people, so basically they are sharing the same language, the same customary practices, the same traditions, no? and cultural traits that are only distinct to their respective group. Class, even if they are called as indigenous people, this is a collective even if this is a collective term, still we, uh, we have different no, indigenous group no, which are, who are part of the indigenous people, the word indigenous people. So make no mistake, um, these indigenous groups do not share common language. But a certain indigenous group share common language, customs, tradition, and cultural traits. They are historically differentiated from majority through resistance to political, social, cultural of colonization. So the reason perhaps why um, indigenous groups are located in a far-flung areas from the downtown or Sikasentran is because the majority, um, majority are resisting no, to the political, social, and cultural changes brought, of course, by um, the different um, people who colonized our country and even the influence from the different countries who are visiting um, our country, for instance. Ancestral domains refers to areas to include but not limited to ancestral lands, forests, pasture lands, residential lands, agricultural lands, hunting grounds, and even burial grounds. It also includes worship areas, bodies of water, mineral and other natural resources, home ranges for nomadic IPs, and places that traditionally they had access to. The aforementioned should be held under a claim of ownership or occupied or possessed by the indigenous groups by themselves or through their ancestors communally or individually since time immemorial continuously to the present. That's under Rule 2, Section 1 and Rule 3, Part 1, Section 2. Later, we'll be discussing certain provisions of IPRA law which would help you 
or as a guide in answering your examination. This is just a general concept no, of what IPRA law contains. Moreover, ancestral land refers to lands which are occupied, possessed, and utilized by the individuals, families, and clans who are members of the indigenous groups, including the mentioned examples. RA 8371 is an act to recognize, protect, and promote the right of indigenous cultural communities or ICCs or indigenous people or IP. Creating a national commission of indigenous people, establishing, implementing mechanisms, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Remember class, RA 8371 created the National Commission on Indigenous people or of indigenous people. Okay, now question. What makes the government think to establish a separate agency which would protect the indigenous people? Because maybe the government is now noticing the changes and the um, decreasing number no, of rem or yeah, diminish uh, this decreasing number of indigenous people in our country. Because most indigenous people right now, class, are starting to integrate no, with the uh, people from downtown areas or kung saan-saan sila napupunta. Kung galing sila, class, sa kabundukan, in isolated or far-flung areas, they are not trying to merge no, with people dito sa baba. And then they try to socialize, they try to act the same way that people from sa di nga baba, the way they act. No? So, ganun siya. So, the government start noticing changes on the behavior um, and the tradition, nawawala yung tradition and the protection of their culture and their ethnicity. So, Republic Act 8371 does not intend to confine them in their defined territories, but it allows the indigenous people to think that they are protected by the government. Na hindi sila napapabayaan at hindi sila nakakalimutan ng gobyerno. Only a law of such breadth, depth, and scope of RA 8371 can provide our indigenous peoples with, with the seeds of their empowerment and social equity. That's according to former President Fidel Ramos during the signing of RA 8371 in 1997. Remember, it was in the time of Fidel Ramos when RA8371 was enacted. According to uh, Talaandig and Manobo of Bukidnon, the state shall recognize um, and promote all the rights of ICCs and IPs here under enumerated within the framework of the Constitution, the right to ancestral domain, right to self-government and empowerment, right to social justice and human rights, Right to Cultural Integrity, Indigenous Peoples' Right Act of 1997, who entered the area, did the Lumad enter the protected area of the, the protected area trespass the Lumad. Uh, this is the a case. No, this is a case which involves the uh, trespassing on their res uh, on their respected respective protected lands or protected areas. R8371 or the IPRA was enacted in 1997. Central to these two are provisions there under on the rights of indigenous peoples or IPs, including those over ancestral domains and lands. The law covers all activities within these areas, including development projects conducted or sought to be conducted in these areas by non IPs. Now, all project class which involve making the IP areas as part of their project is um, protected under RA8371. So, hindi pwedeng pumunta ka lang, any private company can just go directly to um, the indigenous community and try to buy their respective properties because they are now protected under RA8371. An example of the reasons why EPRO was implemented. IPRA has raised a complex range of issues and concerns for the mining industry, which have resulted in a considerable degree of uncertainty. The interests of mining companies and IPs have been pitted against each other and often see inherent conflicting. Okay? Again, because indigenous people 
most often than not, they are residing in areas which have great resources, including the area where tinatarget ng mga mining companies. Nagkakaroon ng conflict of interest on between the two. The interest of the indigenous people over their ancestral domains or ancestral lands and the interest of mining companies over their respective businesses also or their agenda. Chapter 1. Okay, hindi ko na ito i-discuss. Dito na tayo. Let's go directly class to um, the provisions na nasa libro ninyo. If you can just get your book on page 185. Let's try to discuss now um, the indigenous people's right up. Let's start with Section 7, Rights to Ancestral Domains. Section 7A, the right of ownership. The right to claim ownership over lands, bodies of water traditionally and actually occupied by indigenous cultural communities or indigenous peoples, sacred places, traditional hunting and fishing grounds, and all improvements made by them at any time within the domains. Okay, because of Section 7A, it provides now the right. In RA8371, Section 7A vested the right of ownership to the indigenous cultural communities or IPs. Nang ano, they can claim the ownership over their lands, the bodies of water, but given. There are two criterions. One, they should be traditionally occupying this land or bodies of water. Okay, so pasabi natin traditionally, we are talking here about the consistent stay. No? Dapat hindi umaalis doon. From one generation to another generation, dapat andun palagi. Okay, now if you'll try to um, research more on Section 7A, you'll get to know that there's at least 30 years of stay ang dapat na consume na or ang dapat na nagamit na nung may ari nung lupa doon sa lupang kinatitirikan ng bahay niya okay para ma-invoke ma niya ang right of ownership niya okay so traditionally yon how about actually occupying o nag-occupy ko niya si A as indigenous group 30 years doon But after 30 years pumunta siya nag-transfer siya ng ibang lugar for 5 years or at least let's say 5 10 years okay so after 10 years a, um, bumalik siya sa lupang dating niyang um, tinirhan for 30 years kasi doon din nagstay yung indigenous community nila or indigenous group nila. No? Pwede pa ba niyang i-invoke ang right of ownership niya? No. Why? Because the right has already been extinguished because, of, because they should be actually occupying the area from the day that they invoke the right of ownership or until that day that they have invoked the right of ownership. So dapat, since tung 30 years siya, dapat kumuha, kumuha um, dapat, or let's say hindi nga umabot ng 30 years, let's say 29 years siya, and then after 29 years, lumipat siya ng bahay. So hindi niya na-satisfy yung requirement na 30 years para magkaroon siya ng, o ma-invoke niya ang right of ownership doon sa lupang yun. Okay. So pag sinabi naman na, again, actually occupying, dapat hanggang ngayon doon ka nakatira. Traditional ka nang nakatira doon, actual pa. You are supposed to be occupying the area um, para ma-invoke mo yung right of ownership na yun. In which, uh, a right of ownership also includes traditional hunting and fishing grounds. Okay? And all improvements made by them. Ano man ang gawin class, ng mga tao, ng mga indigenous community sa lupang yun, hindi sila pwedeng pakialaman because they are protected under Section 7A. They have all the rights to any improvements. They have all the rights to own any improvements na ginawa nila sa lugar na yun at any time within the domains. The domains, we are talking about the defined territory that they are staying. Now, how about, let's talk about Section 7B. The right to, ancest uh, right to develop lands and natural resources. Okay, this is just a continuation on the premise provided by Section 7A. But Section 7B is now more defined, more precise. 
when it vested the right to develop lands and natural resources to the indigenous cultural community. They have the right to develop land. They have the right to control their land. They have the right to use their lands. And even all the natural resources surrounding the respective defined territories, they have the right to develop it. Okay? The lands and ter territories traditionally occupied, owned, or used. Let's talk about Section 7C, the right to stay in the territories. No ICCs or IPs will be relocated without their free and prior informed consent nor through any other any means other than eminent domain. Okay, now, this would answer now the question. Pwede bang paalisin ang mga indigenous cultural communities or IPs ng basta-basta lang whether ng gobyerno o ng private companies. But, make no mistake that a case of a government reclaiming the property of IPs is different from a case where private companies sought to buy okay, a territory owned by ICCs. It's two different things. Okay, now, let's talk about free and prior informed consent. Ano bang ibig sabihin natin itong free and prior informed. Kasi this is the criteria eh, under Section 7C na dapat mananatili sila sa lugar na yun ng, o unless, or sorry, walang papalisin sa lugar na yun kung walang free and prior informed consent. Now on your book on page 186, refer to chapter 2, section 3G. It defined now free and prior informed consent as used in this act shall mean the consensus of all members of the indigenous cultural communities to be determined in accordance with their respective customary laws and practices. Okay? Ibig sabihin, the government and private companies should be out of the picture when, the, when a particular indigenous group vote whether they are going to stay or they, go, they want to be relocated. Okay? Sir, ito ba sir yung typical consensus na magtatanong, magre-raise ng hand? Depende po yun. Because under chapter 2, section 3, it will depend in accordance with their respective customary laws. Kung ano sa tingin ng chieftain ang makakabuti, kung paano niya gagawin ang consensus na yan, na kung paano talaga nila ginagawa ang botohan, will be leaving it to them. Okay? Walang say po ang gobyerno, walang say ang private companies. Kaya nga free. They should be Free from any external manipulation. Dapat hindi pwede na may nakikialam na galing sa gobyerno o galing sa private companies. Another, they should be free from interference and coercion. Hindi pwedeng pipwersahin sila to vacate the area. Okay? And obtained after fully disclosing the intent and scope of the activity in a language and process understandable to the community. Remember, class, we are talking here about indigenous cultural communities. And it is only logical to presume, and I think studies will show, that most of these people, most of these members of ICCs are illiterate. Okay? Most of them are not studying. Most of them, they are already fine kung anong meron sila, kung anong class na education system meron sila. Okay? So, Chapter 2, Section 3, with a defining free and prior informed consent, would protect now the IPs from manipulation no, from the private or government sector that the dapat daw, sabi ng Chapter 2, Section 3, kailangan i-disclose mo muna ang intention mo. Okay? Ipaliwanag mo sa mga indigenous people kung ano intention mo sa pagbili o pag-acquire ng lupain na yun. Okay? Secondly, dapat yung scope ng activity na gagawin nyo sa territory na yun. Hindi pwede na vague or dapat hindi pwede na malabo sa part ng mga ICCs or IPs kung anong gagawin mo sa areas nila. Kung gagawin mo yung ecotourism site, you tell them. Kung gagawin mo siyang mining site, you tell them. And then let them decide in their own free will through their respective customary laws. Okay? 
in a language and process understandable to the community. Kung ano ay intindihan kan kunyari iriga, you have to translate the entire contract to uh, a language that they understand. Kung yan ay English, i-translate mo yun sa kanila kung anong lingwahe ang naiintindihan nila. Okay? Because that is a one element of uh, for a contract to be valid. Okay? So, again, wala pong mapapaalis, walang marirelocate na IPs hanggang wala yung free at prior informed consent. So, sana, I hope that it's now clear to you that this word, free and prior informed consent, does not mean it's shallow definition. Okay? Because another provision in IPRA defined this terminology. And I hope it's clear now to you. But there is an exemption. Nor through any means other than eminent domain. Now, eminent domain is a power of state. Okay, according to definition, particularly you know our constitution is just a carbon copy of the American Constitution. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Eminent domain refers to the power of the government to take private property and convert it to public use. Okay. That's the definition of eminent domain. Now, it's the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. But in the Philippines, it's part of our Constitution. Okay? The right to eminent, do uh, the, um, the power of eminent domain. Kaya silang paalisin ng gobyerno kung talagang kinakailangan yung lupain nila. But of course, even if they are exempted under Section 7C, the government, in a, um, if in good faith, and a sign of courtesy should exercise free and prior informed consent among the members of the IPs. Hindi pwede na ah, exempted naman pag gobyerno, okay lang yan. As a form of courtesy and respect to these people, they should exercise due diligence in free and prior informed consent towards the people of the indigenous cultural community. Okay? So I hope it is clear now about the re right to stay in the territories provided under Section 7C. Okay, let's talk about Section 10, Unauthorized and Unlawful Intrusion. You can just refer to your book. Unauthorized and Unlawful Intrusion upon or use of any portion of the ancestral domain or any violation of the rights herein before enumerated shall be punishable under this law. Furthermore, the government shall take measures to prevent non-IPs from taking advantage of the IPs' customs of a lack of understanding of laws to secure ownership. Pag may private companies who want to intrude, okay, ibig sabihin, gusto nilang pumasok sa defined territory ng IPs at gusto nilang puwersahin na bilhin yun. Or let's say, kahit hindi puwersahin, they are negotiating, they are settling for a particular amount of price para doon sa lupain na yun. Okay? So, sabi ng Section 10, bawal. Lalo na kung they will be taking advantage of the illiteracy maybe of some of the of the group and also the lack of understanding to loss. No, hindi kasi hindi wala naman masyadong alam sa batas ito mga taong ito. So, pag tinake advantage sila, they will be punishable by law under Section 10. Section 11 is the recognition of ancestral domain rights. The rights of ICCs or IPs to their ancestral domains by virtue of native title shall be recognized and respected. Formal recognition when solicited by IPs concerned shall be embodied in a certificate of ancestral domain title which shall recognize the title of the concerned IPs over the territories identified and delineated. Remember, class, without a certificate of ancestral domain title, the indigenous people cannot exercise these rights provided under RA 8371. So, which means, sir, kailangan pa ba na itong mga indigenous group ang pupunta sa gobyerno para magpa-issue ng certificate ng CADT? Hindi. Kaya nga po, class, the government through RA 8371 created NCIP para si NCIP ang hahagilap sa iba't ibang grupo ng indigenous people and to make sure to create a deliberate and careful assessment kung karapat dapat bang bigyan ng certificate of ancestral domain title itong indigenous people nito. Failure to comply would of course extinguish the right 
no? Wala silang magiging karapatan na sa lupain na yun. Okay, so kinakailangan ma-assess muna ng NCIP kung talagang masasatisfy nila yung requirements pa mabigyan sila ng CADT. No person can be given a CADT if hindi niya ma-comply sa requirement. Ano yung mga requirement? Go back na to Section 7A, B, C. Diba? Yung discussion natin Section 7A, traditionally and actually occupying the land. So alam nyo na ngayon. Look, look at now your test paper and start um, analyzing the situation. Okay? So siguro na maalam nyo na palong sagot dyan. Okay? Sige. So that's, for un that's under Section 11. So class, um, I will be ending my discussion there. You can turn on your camera. I'll be ending my discussion there. Um,